In the late 1960s, the Soviet government reopened the legal possibility for repatriation and family reunification for Jews, as had been the case for a while after the end of World War II. As a result, world Jewish efforts on behalf of the Jews of the Soviet Union switched its focus from a campaign for cultural and religious freedoms to a demand for emigration rights. The slogan of that campaign, aptly enough, was the biblical demand made by Moses to the Egyptian pharaoh, let my people go, shalach et ami. During those final two decades of Soviet rule, the issue of Jewish emigration from the USSR became an important political issue for all of the parties concerned, the Soviet government, the Soviet Jews themselves, but also Israel, the United States, other Western governments, and Jewish communities across the world. For as the USSR proceeded from the late 1960s through the 1970s and beyond to impose restrictions and conditions on Jewish emigration, the question became one of policy interests and diplomatic negotiation. It became embedded in bilateral relations with the United States, with each side using it as leverage. It was attached to the review process, monitoring the compliance uh, of the Soviet Union with the Helsinki Accords. It was a recurrent irritant in domestic Soviet affairs because it coincided with dissident movement activities in various other sectors of Soviet life and it became entangled in Soviet relations with Arab countries, which were becoming client states of the Soviet Union. The Soviet regime appeared to be holding Soviet Jewish emigration hostage, making the entire process very difficult, very selective, and in some years, the number of permits for emigration was almost negligible. Jews who applied for exit visas were harassed, removed from places of employment, and in general, subjected to various other pressures. For the next few minutes, I'm going to discuss how this played out in terms of relations between Israel and its representatives on the one hand, and the American Jewish community on the other. Most of American Jews are themselves descendants of former emigres from Russia, Romania, and Poland. And so the Jewish community in the US has always considered those ancestors to have been refugees, escaping persecution. Now, with the beginning of the Soviet Jewish exodus, the emigres were once again being thought of as refugees. Congresswoman Elizabeth Holtzman of New York, who worked together with Senator Ted Kennedy to pass new refugee assistance legislation in Congress, recalled, and I quote, my mother and her family came to the United States as refugees in 1921, fleeing the communist takeover of Ukraine and endless pogroms against Jews. One day, members of my family were leading a comfortable middle-class life. The next, they were running for their lives and came here to the United States with little more than the clothes on their back." Unquote. By the mid to late 1970s, it became clear that some Soviet Jews were opting to emigrate to America and other Western countries rather than to Israel. And they were admitted to the United States as refugees who had faced discrimination and persecution in the USSR. Federal funds were channeled to social service agencies to help those new Americans get started in their new lives. And in the case of Soviet Jews, the agencies who handled the caseload were Jewish sponsored organizations. The Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, Hayas, was responsible for caring for the emigres while they were in Italy, awaiting their visas. And in the US, other Jewish community groups took care of their resettlement. None of this sat well with Israel's government and with the Zionist organization's executive body in Israel called the Jewish Agency. In a sense, the American position, the American Jewish position, was that a campaign had been waged on behalf of the human rights of Soviet Jews as individuals. And as individuals, they ought therefore to be free to choose what destination country they wanted to emigrate to. 
from the Israeli side, the position was Jewish public funds were being raised in order to pay for the emigration and resettlement of Jews leaving the Soviet Union. And those funds should not be spent on resettling those Jewish emigrants in a third country, such as the United States or West Germany at the time. Uh, and therefore, there was a, a, an argument on the ideological level in terms of what is the proper use of uh, Jewish public funds. There was also an argument at the level of the organizations themselves. The Israeli side, the government, and the Jewish agency uh, believed that organizations in the United States, such as Hayas, uh, were uh, simply uh, benefiting from the federal funds that they were receiving from the US government for refugee resettlement, and that this was, as it were, an ulterior motive for them to become interested parties in Soviet Jewish resettlement. Now, this question of whether the Jews were, in fact, refugees, or whether they were repatriates in rejoining their families and nation in the uh, Jewish state of Israel, this became an ideological football between the two communities, and it lasted for a number of years, with accusations going back and forth. In the end, what made all of this come to some sort of a resolution was, in fact, the fall of the Soviet regime. By the end of the 1980s, and certainly by 1991, uh, when the uh, USSR no longer uh, existed as such, uh, the United States government uh, changed its policy on uh, Jews leaving the Soviet Union because they were no longer fleeing persecution or discrimination. The regime that had persecuted them or discriminated against them no longer existed. And so they were reclassified. Uh, they no longer uh, were going to be admitted in such large numbers under the refugee clause. And at the same time, a much greater number of Jews began exiting the former Soviet Union, many of them indeed to the state of Israel, many of them going elsewhere, including the United States. But the volume of these new post-1991 emigres, uh, totaling more than one and a half million cumulatively, the volume was such that in the United States itself, the American Jewish communities realized that they did not have uh, the budgetary or the legal possibilities to make this resettlement program happen locally and that they were in a much better position to raise funds to help the Israeli government and Israeli authorities to handle immigrant absorption in the state of Israel. And that indeed is how the uh, problem was uh, eventually resolved. Still, I think the point is worth considering that for a while, particularly in the 1970s into the early 1980s, while this debate flared between the two major Jewish communities of the world, uh, it was clear that uh, there was clash of interests between the two, and they had to decide the American Jewish organizations had to decide, in principle, were they going to make their stand on human rights grounds? The Israeli side had to decide, were they going to stand their ground on the national argument, that these were national issues pertaining to the state of Israel and the Jewish people as a nation. And between those two positions, there is a gap. American Jews have always had a bit of an issue over how to define themselves in American society. And it's much easier and much more appropriate for many American Jews to define themselves as a large group of individuals exercising free choice uh, in creating their own voluntary institutions, supporting their own Jewish identity, as individuals within families and voluntary communities. In Israel, a state with a national flag and a national politics, um, the right of the individual to choose or not to choose is not always the ultimate answer. Sometimes, in a national political sense, 
uh, the question boils down to one of national history. What is in the best interests of the nation as a political entity? And so, although this happened quite a long time ago, back in the 70s and 80s, I believe that the issues still remain and still divide the United States and, uh, and uh, Israeli Jews in terms of their self-image and their ideology. Thank you.